Hi second graders, Miss Diorio here from Citizenship Academy with your next math lesson. So we're still working in base 10 and units of 10, so tens, hundreds, thousands. Today we're going to be working on counting up to a thousand using this place value chart. Remember that place value chart, I believe you learned about it in first grade, where we can divide numbers based on their place value. So make sure you have something to write with, something to write on today. Pause the video, go grab those things. In the meantime, I just want to review some of the images that we can use for hundreds, tens, and thousands. So for, and ones. For ones, we can use this little dot that can represent our ones. Tens, we typically use a ten stick. And hundreds, typically use a square. Now, if for, ever, for whatever reason you need to draw, a image for a thousand, you can just kind of make a cube there, however you want to do that. Right. Here we go. So we're going to get right into our application problem today. Do not write anything yet. We're going to work through it first. So our application problem says, at his birthday party, Joey got $100 from each of his two grandmothers, $40 from his dad, and $5 from his little sister. How much money did Joey get for his birthday? What I want you to do is to pause the video, talk to someone at home about what information this problem is giving you and how you can draw it out, again, using those shapes that I just went over. So I'll show you the problem again. Take a minute at home, talk to somebody at home about what this problem is asking you, what information it's giving you, and how you could draw it out. Okay, so let's talk about it. It says Joey got $100 from two of his grandmothers. So he got $100 from two of his grandmothers. So he got two sets of $100. How can we draw that? What shape would we use to represent 100? Yeah, a square. So I'm gonna draw two squares, 100, 200, because he got two sets of 100. And then it says he got $40 from his dad. How could we draw that? Well, I know 40 is a base 10 number, so I can use 10 sticks. So we can go 10, 20, 30, 40, right? And then he got $5 from his little sister. Now that's not quite 10, so I'm just gonna take my little ones, three, four, five, draw five ones, all right? So, we can solve this in a couple different ways. We can add each part. We can do 100 plus 100 plus 40, oops, sorry, plus 5. One way to solve it. Or we can just kind of count our pieces here. Go ahead and solve it in whatever way makes the most sense to you. Pause the video and solve. Come back when you're ready. Ready? Okay. So we can kind of count our base 10 objects here, we can go 100, 200, 210, oh, look at it's doing it for us, 210, 220, 230, 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, 245. So we can do it that way, or we can add. We're going to add like terms, so we're going to add the 100 plus the 100, and the 40 plus the 5, 200 plus 45, 245. So, remember, we can't just stop a word problem there. We have to tell what that 245 means. What does the 245 mean? Is it 245 bananas? $245, right? Joey got $245 for his birthday. That is a lot of money. Joey's very lucky. Ooh. All right. Let's get into it. How many ones are there in the place value box right here? How many ones are there? Nine. Very good. Now, if I put another one into that box, what a larger unit will that make? Good. It'll make a ten stick. So we can group all those ones together, because there are ten of them, and move them over and make one ten stick. Awesome. Boop, boop, boop. Let's count the tens in the box now. Ready? So we have that one ten from before, so let's count our tens. We have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine tens. We have nine tens, what is the value of that? 90, very good, we can count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, beautiful. Now if we put another 10 into the box, what is the larger unit that we can make? If we have 10 in that box, what do we need to do with it? We can bundle them together and make what larger unit? 100. Very good. Now we have 100. All right. How many ones are in the box? Zero. How many tens are in the box? Zero. How many hundreds are in the hundreds box? One. So when we have one hundred and zero and zero, that is how we get the number one hundred. Awesome. Okay. Now, I want you to try this on your own. You are going to take your paper. You can split it up into boxes like this. This is how I like to make my place value charts. Or you can just kind of draw the pieces. But I want you to use ones, tens, and hundreds to draw out 124. Think about how many ones, how many tens, how many hundreds. If you want to draw a little chart, I do hundreds, tens, and ones. You are more than welcome to do that. If you just want to draw the units, that's fine. But I want to see the squares, um, lines, and circles to represent hundreds, tens, and ones. So pause the video, draw 124. Ready? Okay, let's check your work. So with this, I'm going to start with the hundreds. I know 124, I see a 1 in the hundreds place, so I'm going to draw 100. I see a two in the tens place, which means 20, so I'm gonna do whoop, two tens. Two tens, 20. 120, and then there are four leftover ones. 124, ta-da! Thumbs up if you got that. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna practice counting from 476 to 600. Remember when we do this, we want to get to those benchmark numbers that make it easier for us to count by tens or for us to count by hundreds. So when we're starting at 476, we want to take the small, the ones and get them to the next 10. And then once we're at hundreds, get it to the next 10 hundreds. Does that make sense? So we don't want to count by ones because that's going to take forever. So we're going to use a combination of hundreds, ones, tens, and hundreds to get there. So. I want you to pause the video and talk to someone at home. What should our first step be to make it easier for us to count by tens? What should we count by first? And what number should we get to? Okay, let's talk about it. So we're starting at 476. The next benchmark number, the easiest number that we're going to get to is 478. I mean, 480, sorry. We're at 476, so we're going to count on to get to 480. So we're at 476, 477, 478, 479, 480. Now, what can we count by? We're at 480. What can we count by to get to the next 100? Yeah, we want to count by tens to get from 480 to 500. We want to get to that next benchmark number, that next base 10 number. So we're at 480, so now we're going to count by tens till we get to 500. So 480, 490, 500. Stop. Now what can we count by to make it super easy? Yes, we can count by hundreds. So we're at 500, 600, and we're there. Done. So we had to use a combination of all three of those things to get to that next Number. Counting by ones the whole way would have taken forever. It's important that we get to these benchmark numbers of 480 so that we can count by tens and then 500 so that we can count by 100s. Okay, make it easier for yourself. Get to those benchmark numbers that make it easy to add on by tens or 100s. All right, so let me show you your exit ticket for today. This is kind of what we did at the beginning of our lesson. You're going to see 10 bundles of 10. 
When you put 10 bundles of 10s together, are you going to get 1s, 10s, 100s, 1, 10, 100, or 1,000? Same thing with same thing with number 5. I'm sorry. These are bundles of 100. If you put 10 bundles of 100 together, do you get 1, 100, 1,000, or 10? The 2 in the middle, the 3 in the middle, you are going to count up your 100s, 10s, and 1s, and tell me what the number is. This one's in a place value chart, same idea, but you need to type your number in. And then this one, I just want you to recognize what this is. If it's 100, 10, or 1. Okay? A couple of them are multiple choice today, so be careful when you choose your answer so you don't get tricked. The other ones, you're going to type your answer in. Sound good? Okay. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.